Tonight on Facebook Live, it's the CUNY Community College Women's Volleyball Championship match. Top seeded BMCC took the floor earlier today and they make very quick work of fourth seeded Hostos in a straight sets victory. And just minutes ago, Queensboro did the same to Kingsboro. With that, the top two seeds meeting here in Bayside on the campus of Queensboro Community College. And with that, good evening and welcome. Alongside Paige Band, I'm Ralph Bidnarchik. Queensboro is six-time defending champions here in the CUNYs. But this year is the first time they haven't swept through the entire league. This year, BMCC defeated them both times in the regular season. However, for BMCC to win their title for the first time since 2006, they'll have to do it on Queensboro's home floor. You can't ask for more pressure to go into a championship match, but both of these teams are excited for that challenge. BMCC is coming in as a new team, new sound, um, and they're really excited to come in and do something special here tonight. But Queensboro has experience, so they're not going to let them off easy, and it's going to be a really fun match. And for BMCC, first-year coach Nia Bell found herself a star. The outside hitter, just a sophomore, Josanne Lewis, is from Minnesota, moved to New York for a change of scenery. She became CUNY Player of the Year. You know, she brings an incredible talent. She has so much body control that allows her to be such a strong hitter for this BMCC team. They're going to rely on her offense and her experience in order to bring a championship home tonight. And for Queensboro, they are very big across the front line, including 5'11 sophomore right side hitter Rosanna Bradica, first team all region 15. You know, Rosanna has her own experience and she's just as excited to come in and play. She's so adaptable. She came in as a middle blocker and now she's a right side and she continues to impact this team. Most importantly on defense, her matchup against Lewis is going to be key to their victory tonight. So BMCC looking to defeat Queensboro for the third time this year and end the Tigers dynasty. They'll have to do it in Bayside. Queensboro and BMCC next on Facebook Live. 2022-23 CUNY Athletic Conference Championships are presented by Health First. Health insurance for New Yorkers, the official wellness sponsor of CUNY Athletics. The Hospital for Special Surgery, number one in the U.S. for orthopedics, is proud to be the official hospital of the CUNY Athletic Conference. CUNY University Student Senate, providing our students the platform to shape the City University of New York. And Hometown Ticketing, the official ticketing provider of the CUNY Athletic Conference. So Queensboro in an unusual position. First time in a decade that they have been the two seed. But they get to host and play this year's CUNY Community College Women's Volleyball Championship match on their home floor. Let's have a look at our starters with Paige Van, Ralph Denorcha. Here are the Tigers wearing the road uniforms here inside their gym. 5'7", right shirt sophomore setter, Desiree Morales. CUNY All-Star last year, she'll do the setting with Epic Yurtatan from Turkey, one outside hitter. The other is Lisbeth Ortiz, CUNY All-Star this year, the other outside. Anna Duran will be the middle, along with Brianna Griffiths, pair of local freshmen. Rosanna Bradica, returning starter, last year started in the middle, this year on the right side. And the libero is the terrific Angelica Hernandez from Bayside and Francis Lewis High School as the libero for 13th year head coach Jason Demas. For BNCC, everybody in their first season as a Panther. Doing the setting is Jenny Dosi, the Region 15 Center of the Year. She's from Italy. Outside, Josanne Lewis, the CUNY Player of the Year. And the other outside will be Johanna Boliaga Ramirez getting the start. The right side hitter, Amy Curiolo in the middle. Cheyenne Gray Taint from Harlem. And 5'6 freshman from Haiti, and Emanuela Orell. And the libero is freshman Sarah Lee from Staten Island, comprising the BNCC starters. For first year head coach, Mia Bell. Well, Jason Demas, nine times remarkably, has been coach of the year. Nine championships he has won. He is Queensboro Community College's all-time winningest coach in any sport. And they are here for the remarkable eighth straight time. For Nia Bell, much different. She won CUNY Coach of the Year honors. 
young coach. Her grandparents used to live in Bridgeport, Connecticut. That's why she is here, and she is from North Carolina. Played two years at Division II Fort Valley State in Georgia, two years at Fayetteville State University in North Carolina. She took this job, wanted to grow as a, as a head coach, and boy, she has certainly delivered on that since getting the job late in the spring. Well, Paige, championship experience, however, as we noted in our open, six returners for Queensboro that have played with a little bit of pressure. How do you assess that factor tonight? You know, experience will always give you something to work off of. It can be the thing that eases your nerves because when you've been there before, it's not, you know, a new experience. However, when you're going up against a team that has beaten you twice in the regular season, that is its own mental hurdle to come over. So while you've got the experience, it's the one team, if there's any team out there that's going to bring down QCC tonight, it would be BMCC. The up official, Jenny Chen, down official, Samantha Han, doing the honors tonight. Two teams have also really gone through in terms of injuries, players not being available, and all that comes with the junior college life of students and student athletes who have varying work schedules. Queensboro and Jason Deem is telling us this is in his 13 years, probably the most injuries he has experienced, but ironically also the year he has the most depth. I feel like for most coaches, managing any season, it's really injury management because as we had talked about prior to the game, QCC has not had a full squad consistently throughout the season. So how they play tonight with who they've got on the court is going to be key to their success. Jenny Josie, the center, as she goes to Orell and the swing brought right back. Now outside, and the roll shot from Boliaga Ramirez. Braditza and Rosanna Braditza starts tonight's scoring. She's from nearby Francis Lewis High School. Terrific year, last year's a starting middle. This year, a little bit back and forth for Rosanna between middle and right side. You know, I mean, I love the adaptability of a player who can really move around in the front row. It makes them very hard to follow. So when you're trying to come up with a defensive scheme as an opponent, you make it very difficult. And her hitting variety is going to be a great tool for her tonight. There's Amy Criolo with the hitting error. So it is 2-0 Queensboro CC. There are some fascinating stories, particularly on the BMCC side, that we'll tell you about. Again, two years without volleyball for BMCC due to the pandemic. Queensboro did play last year. Well, now we have the score adjustment. Let's see, prior to the attacking error by Criollo, Jason Demas getting an explanation. We have the on the score, ladies and gentlemen. We have only one set number one. They're calling a touch at the net. So it'll be 1-1, one, one, and Criollo will get credit for a kill. Well, as Jason Demas, as we see him there, Tigers taking eight losses to this point, and they ended last year having won 52 straight matches against CUNY opponents. They ran that up to 54 in a row before their September loss to BMCC. Just a remarkable decade or near decade of dominance as Braditza hits into the net and it's 2-1 Panthers. And having a coach with that kind of confidence and knowing how to build a team and how to get them to work together, especially with the turnaround of players that you're going to get at, um, at these schools, is its own thing to be proud of. So whatever happens here tonight, we know it's going to be a really good match. Pass tight to the net on the serve and BMCC 3-1 as they bring on Albina Rugova. She's from Riverdale in the Bronx. And she started the season as their setter in a 6-2, now as a DS. Morales, Braditza. And this time Braditza running the middle. And her second kill, both points for the Tigers. See, and that's where versatility matters. You've got a player who knows how to play in multiple positions. A lot of times when you specialize as a middle, you can't hit too many different options because you're used to running a, a very specific system. Her versatility allows her to be a weapon everywhere on the court. It's going to be really hard to track her down. Here to 10 on the outside. Ball up by Dotsi. 
Dunty outside, first swing of the night is a good one for Josanne Lewis. Josanne earlier, 25 kills, 18 digs against Hostos, her seventh 20 plus kill match of the year. I mean, that, that's incredible to be able to pull those kinds of numbers. And she was able to really trick uh, the QCC team pulling their blockers had pulled more to cover the right side. So it left her with a lot of opportunity and she's gonna take advantage of it. Braditza finds the back corner, swinging over the double. It's so important to hit the back line when you're playing defense, and most defenders, you, you think you've got it, so you, you're going to let it go. And key example of why you get your foot to the back line. Because it, it kills you inside when that ball drops before uh, when you could have gotten it. Double block, put on Lewis. You're to 10. Look for the roll shot. BMCC got hands on it, but he picked your to 10. That was a great, great block by Duran, who, you know, didn't get the false read this time, was there for it. And blocking Lewis is going to be so important for QCC to keep her in line. Lewis can only tip. Joust at the net, don't she? Along with Anna Duran. Then Duran couldn't terminate. Lewis, and then on the fall away, and that is left short, and it is Queensboro now back in front, 5-4, early timeout here for BMCC coach Nia Bell. So I for Neo, a remarkable story because she took the job in the springtime, interviewing in April, immediately went to work to recruiting. She first started tryouts on a Zoom call. There was 50 players on it. Tryout started in August page. There were only 10 players that showed up and eventually through into deep August Random players showed up and she has put this team together as a very very young coach who has only been out of college now three years I mean there's something to say about a coach who doesn't who isn't brought down by all the politics and all like the kind of craziness that happens in college sports someone who's really just there to be around girls that want to learn and is open to who's ever willing to be a part of that story and the result of that is a team with great chemistry that's something that she really speaks to is how much chemistry this team has they want to be near each other i've been around teams where you spend so much time together traveling and doing you want nothing to do with them when you don't have to be together and that's not what this team does. They want to be around each other. And that, that's what carries them through the hard times in a match. As she says, this team goes out together after every practice to eat. Lewis threw a double. Yurtatan slowed down by tape. Lewis outside, down the line. Nice bump set that Emanuela Orell, who is something of a super utility player, out to Lewis. Five all. That was a beautiful kill. I mean, just perfect form, well spotted, you know, went over that block. That's how she's gonna want it all night. She had 23 kills in the most recent meeting in October against Queensboro here in this gym. 16 kills, 13 digs. Neither match was a great percentage by Lewis and we'll see if Queensboro can contain her. There's Anna Duran. And right through the back row of Rugova, or as, you know, Coach uh, Jason Dimas pointed out, it's about making these, you know, one-point volley type of rallies where you don't want it to go on for too long. And it's going to be who can produce the most as soon as possible and keep a momentum going. You know, it's going to be really easy for these teams to tire out with where these volleys can go. And Lewis into a double, commits the hitting error, and Queensboro nudging ahead, 7-5. Yurta Tan with the target. Roll shot came from Lewis. Joust at the net. And that lands short as BMCC Cheyenne Gray Tate was waiting for it. It'll go as a kill for the Panthers. At 5 4, she was rocking it up at that net. She was in perfect position to get that ball. And she made sure to use something, you know, really important. A lot of players like to go up on an overpass and kill the ball. But sometimes a little block, a little touch off the net is enough to get you the point. Josanne Lewis from Rochester, Minnesota. To tell you her story further and what she is doing on the west side of Manhattan. 
Lewis out of system. Queensboro slows her down. Morales outside. And then we'll get a lift called against the Queensboro hitter, Lizbeth Ortiz, on the swing from Jenny Chen. So Josanne, in 2019, her freshman year, played at Martin Luther College, an NAIA program in Minnesota. But then the pandemic occurs. She was out of school for a couple years, was looking for, as she says, something different. She decided on New York, applied to CUNY to be a student, matriculated through that ap application system to BMCC. And what do you know it, months later, she is a college player of the year as Lewis has targeted. Dump attempted by Dochi. And we'll get another lift call against Queensboro. That's Brianna Griffiths in the middle. You know, it's volleyball so technical and there are a lot of rules over time that refs have slowly but surely gotten a little bit looser about because it keeps the game moving. But something like a carry or the lift, that's never gonna go away. Can't just hold the ball in your hand and let it move up. Sarah Lee, tough serving for BMCC, the libero. Dochi, push it across, Aurel. And now outside, that's well low for Boliaga Ramirez. I was gonna say, that was a great serve, though. I love a serve that's not about getting an ace, but getting a really bad pass, throw the opposing team off, and that can be enough to get points. I think sometimes you're always so big, I wanna get the kill, I wanna get the ace, but it's really gonna be about just throwing the other team off, force them to make mistakes. Unfortunately, in that case, the MTC ended up getting forced into their own mistake. Desiree Morales, tough serving. Free ball for the Tigers. Morales, not a great first contact. Bradica, though, into a double. And now the Panthers can organize. Dochi outside Aurel. And Aurel, who is a small middle at five foot six from Haiti, but she was a CUNY All-Star this year for her relentless nature defensively. She misses there, and it's 10-8. It's not too often you get a player who specializes as a middle blocker who is a key defensive player, and I'm not just talking up at the net, but in that backcourt. I mean, I've seen her touch the ball pretty much every other time. There is Orell giving up the free ball. Morales, Griffiths, the freshman middle, could not finish. And Boliago Ramirez will. This is a little change. Johanna Boliago Ramirez did not play a lot in the semifinal. But she has been battling another freshman, Jamiel Adorno, all year for that second outside hitter spot with Josanne Lewis occupying the other. And Boliaga Ramirez getting the chance in this championship match. A little competition never hurt nobody, even on your own team. Morales pass tight to the net, and it'll be a net violation. Oh, back row attack. Oh, back row attack, rather, against Queensboro. So, we are back to level at 10 in this opening set. Ah, setter's coming in from the back row, so often when you have an overpass, the setter's gonna try and go up and save the ball, but if it goes over the plane of the net, it counts as a back row attack. Tough serving by Dochi, who's a terrific server. And Dochi outside for Boliaga Ramirez. Morales, Braditza. And an overpass. Well, Morales did not have to play it, and that'll be a gift of a kill for BMCC. Yeah, no, I mean, it went over her head. It looked like it may have come off of her hands just a little bit, but the fact that you didn't know. I'm always a kind of person when I'm coaching players, I want them to go after the ball. If you're not sure what happened, better off playing it. Your to ten, back row attack. Same for Lewis. Lisbeth Ortiz and Lee able to up it. Dump by Dochi. And then getting in the way of Morales was Lisbeth Ortiz. That was going to be Morales' ball. And Jason Demas is going to want to talk it over. Timeout Queensboro with BMCC in front now by two. We take timeout and we'll be back to Bayside on Facebook Live. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, 
ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. Back and forth opening set, Ralph Benorchik and Paige Ben with you from RFK Gymnasium, campus of Queensboro Community College. One of the nation's best servers, Jenny Dochi. She's been in the U.S. four years from Italy. Spent last year at FIT. First year at BMCC as Branditsa, and she's going to be called for a lift. So early on, Jenny Chen has has shown that call and drawn the line in the sand early. You know, and I think that's really important for a ref to do. You don't want to have coaches fighting it out later in the match where they're like, well, you let this go earlier, and you let this go, and you didn't let this go. So being equal and being up front with those calls right up the bat sets an expectation for players. Dochi misses there. Jenny Dochi already fourth all time single season aces at BMCC and fifth in the country in aces per set. Here's Lizbeth Ortiz of Ozone Park, John Adams High School in Queens. What impressed me the most about Dochi is that she really wants to be a hitter. She really wants to do kind of a lot of things on the court, but she knew coming into this team that she had to fill in a role and she was willing to jump into that role. And that's really what's allowed Nia Bell to be so successful as she's gotten a group of players. They may, you know, may have taken some dwindling down, but when she got her final group, they're so, they've bought into the program and that, you know, counts for a lot. Misconnection by Queensboro gives up another point. Yurta Tan, and don't she up with it. Lewis Griffiths all over it. Brianna Graf Griffiths, look out for her. 6'2 freshman middle from Brooklyn Friends School. I mean, she's got the height, so you know she's going to be up at that net and she's going to use it to block. And she's had so much control over where that ball was going to go that she was put in a great spot. Big credit goes to assistant coach Isabel Lawrence, who played at Hunter College, really developing Brianna's offense during the course of the season. And there's an error on a free ball by but, Queensboro. Well, that's why liberos don't. I mean, you get liberos who really do want to hit. They don't get to do it very often. But that would have been a really good set to the middle back to just get them, you know, something really nice and high. Emanuela Orell. You're to ten. Hitting error. Largest lead now for BMCC. The edge is four, 16-12. Aurel will continue. She was the first person to reach out to Nia Bell, emailing her pictures of her playing back in Haiti. And she drops an ace, and the lead is five. That was a beautiful serve. I mean, she just had really great form, and she found a great spot, and you, again, had a player who didn't want to hit the back line, get in front of the ball. It's the only way you're going to know if it's in or out. So BMCC continues this remarkable story. Already having defeated Queensboro twice, and in that, a sweep at that to end the 54-match CUNY winning streak by Queensboro, and then to win on their home floor. Big numbers, of course, put up by Josanne Lewis each time, and Jenny Dochi, quarterback in the offense, had eight aces in the very first meeting. I mean, start, that back line, I'm not saying you don't want to get aces, but having a really strong start to your offense is with the serve. So having players that are going to come in and give you two aces, eight aces, ten aces, whatever it is, that's going to make a huge difference, and that's going to get to the heads of the QCC team who knows what they're going to bring to the table. Emanuela Orell will continue. Originally was 
Going to be their setter very early before Dochi was identified. And Emanuela became BMCC's single season digs record holder. As you mentioned, Paige, for someone that plays the middle blocker role. No, it's an incredible versatility that this team is bringing because when you can have players that can mix up their roles, I mean, you just saw her set. Like, how do you, what do you do with a player like that? You need to find the best place to use their talent, and their talent is clearly all over the court. Meanwhile, Dochi, who Nia Bell says she loves to hit while being a setter, and she hit right into the net. Here is Bronditsa targeting Rugova. Flora, or rather, Lewis, that one off the shoulder of Bronditsa, and not coming back. Josanne Lewis, one on none, exploding. Oh my God, there was so much power behind that hit. You saw when she went up for it, her arm swinging back, and she's just, she snaps her arm down. Um, and what a great run from Angelica Hernandez trying to chase that ball down, but just incredible hit from Lewis. The MCC's Amy Criolo so far, Lewis, three kills. Yurta Tan. RL out to Lewis, yes. Josanne Lewis, the CUNY Player of the Year this year, a record setting season. The single season program record holder in kills and also all time. She became the all time leader in just one year. I mean, you just need players that can put an impact in right away, and that's what she came in ready to do. And if she had that drive before she got here, it's no surprise that, you know, the excitement of New York is going to do a lot for you. Big Don't city, big shoes. With the swing, she adds a kill off tape. And BMCC now in control of this opening set, 20-13. to 13. You know, and it's interesting because as we look at the numbers, you know, neither team is having any kind of great you know, hitting percentage to work off of. So this is really coming down to defensive plays. Who is ready to keep that ball alive? Yurta Ten had the swing. And active hands there by the 6'1", Anna Duran of Queens Village, Cardozo High School, right across the street here from Queensboro. You know, I mean, that's just a beautiful play. She's ready, she has her eye on the ball, and that's all you need to do when you're going to block. Ipek Yurkutan. Dochi. Now they run a combination for Lewis. Blocked by Duran. Yurkutan back row attack is short. I mean, that was a great attempt. It was a good up. She looked a little bit off going in for the approach. So most likely started a little bit too early. She needed to kind of just hold for another second. That ball was pretty high. But it's a great reach and um, continuing to fight for that ball each time and continuing to be aggressive is going to be important. Josanne Lewis hoping to parlay this season into an opportunity at a four-year school. And now she adds an ace. While well, Queensborough's serve receive has fallen apart. Poor passing throughout the set. And BMCC putting on the finishing touches of a first set win. You know, I see, I'm watching BMCC staying really calm throughout this set versus QCC, who seems to be a little bit more frazzled, kind of running around a lot more. So going into whatever happens at the end of this set, second set, they're just going to have to play their game. Hitting error from Boliaga Ramirez. And the blockers were ready. So I think even had that, you know, really cleared the net, the blockers would have been there and ready to throw the ball down. This is freshman Emily Palacio of Jackson Heights, Newcomers High School was recruited during the quarantine period, withdrew from school last year, didn't play. So officially a redshirt freshman as she delivers an ace, 22-16. I hate when that ball trickles over the net and doing something weird, but that's, that's one of the cool rules of volleyball is that the ball can hit the net when you go to serve. She's also got a nice jump float serve. Someone Jason Demas recruited her. There's the jump float at Orel. Poliaga Ramirez slowed down by Griffiths. And now outside Ortiz. And Elizabeth Ortiz has not been able to get the connection with her setter yet. Yeah, she just seemed really sideways on that approach. 
It was like she was already overcompensating and she needed to keep her body straighter so that way she had a better reach on the ball. Sarah Lee played at Tottenville High School in Staten Island. Morales, another swing for Ortiz, much better. Lee, perfect to the front, Dochi hit the second ball. Now on the outside, that's Morales, who was a starting outside hitter last year swinging. Oliaga Ramirez, an overpass, Dochi, Dochi may have thought she had someone running a slide. But then she was in the net. Yeah, ref called her touching the top of the tape. Net call anyway against Queensboro, so it's set point 24-16. And Queensboro's had a couple of frustrating calls against them, the lift, and this one here, just when it looked like the Tigers might put together a little run. You know, they're just going to have to clean it up a little bit, um, reset themselves, and, you know, kind of bring back your basics in your head. But they're still here to fight. I mean, teams have come back from higher deficits than this, so we don't know. Desiree Morales, noted beach player, lives in Long Island City. Lives near those beach courts at LIC, playing grass in those sand courts all the time as she delivers an ace. Well, it's at that time on an outdoor court that's going to make you very good at a float serve because those float serves have a lot of power when you've got real wind playing in as a factor. And um, she was there during the quarantine period playing sand volleyball every day. I have found playing outdoor volleyball, especially if you're doing doubles play, really builds your overall skill set and your ability to read the ball. So all that time spent outdoors, you're learning how to cover more of the court and just how to be more present with your teammates. So lots of great um, skills that she was picking up during that time. BMCC to talk it over. So Queensboro trying to put together a run and even if they fall short, maybe a little bit of momentum. At the preseason, Jason Demas brought in 16, 17 players. So he thought they would be in pretty good shape. <laughs> and over the course of his career, he knows what he's been about uh, in terms of recruiting and then leading to, to wins. But unfortunately, the setter they expected to have lost her father in the summer, decided not to play. That moved Desiree Morales from outside to setter, and then the domino effect began. And then this year, this team has been plagued with injuries and players being unavailable. That depth has been tested. Morales right at Lewis. Dochi outside for Orell. Chance to get closer with the Tigers. Braditza. Played over by Orell. Ortiz. It missed. And BMCC closes out the opening set. 25-19. You know, I mean, that was a strong fight coming, you know, trying to come back from QCC, but BMCC is coming out strong, not only with their offensive weapons, but really picking up the ball on defense and not letting, you know, little things set them back. So they're gonna, they're here to fight. They need to prove themselves and they're more than willing to do it. BMCC looking for their first title since 2006. They lead the championship match one set to none. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access your member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. Six-time defending CUNY Community College champion Queensboro 
held to minus 152 hitting on their home floor by BMCC, who hit 023. But the set taken by the Panthers 25 19. Ralph Bjornczyk with Paige Band. Paige, what do you make of it? Queensboro, just a number of errors, just never looked comfortable. And it's BMCC, the team that only has two players that had ever played any college volleyball before. You know, there's something to be said when you don't have a whole lot of experience. Like, while they're coming in here because they want to prove themselves, there's nothing for them to prove. Like, they're here. So it's a lot more of the pressure is on QCC to prove their dominance with their experience. But, yeah, no, QCC was just really messy, very, like, uncontrolled in their passing. So when you don't have good passes, it's really hard to set up your hitters for success. And so they just had that negative hitting percentage. But, you know, the MCC is also hitting pretty low right now. So there's a lot of improvement that both teams can do to really dominate in this match. Um, it's going to continue to be a fight. I mean, that's still pretty close at, you know, 25-19. So we're, we're in for two more really good sets. And I can see Queensboro wanting to fight back and take that second set and really push this match out tonight. Josanne Lewis, four kills, 071 for one of the nation's top hitters for the Panthers. And Jason Demas saw his team also not pass great either, as he told me this week, Paige, that their area of improvement is if our defense does the job, we can out hit and out serve everybody. I would imagine he's emphasizing defense a lot between sets. Defense wins championships, that's the saying. Um, and I think if, if, B, if QCC can get themselves in better position, one, getting a bigger block. They've got the power and they've got the, the experience on their team to block Lewis. You're gonna have to shut her down some more. She's having way too many free court shots. You know, and that block does more than just stop a ball. Putting up a block is what's going to stop a player from seeing the entire court in front of them. And it, you isolate them to having to hit to certain areas. And you set up your defenders to cover those areas. And it just makes everyone's job easier. So that's going to be key. Can they get their block at least in position in order to slow down Lewis? And Jason called that the strength of the Tigers this year was their blocking with what they can do. 6-2 Griffiths, 6-1 Duran, 5-11 right side hitter Bronditza in junior college, that is very, very large. Hitting error by Amy Criolo off the first pass of the second set, and it's one nothing. So now Morales' job is gonna be, you know, keeping her serve competitive here and allow the team to build some momentum that they were kind of building up at the end of the last set. Morales targeting the libero Lee, and she's come up with consecutive aces. Uh, Desiree played at Long Island City High School, class of 2020. She was a high school setter. Last year, Jason Davis said, we don't know what to do with her, so we put her on the outside because she might be the best all-around volleyball player he's had in his 13 years. It has to be so hard for a coach when you've got a player that can be bring such an impact to all different aspects of the, the court and you have to isolate them to that one position that you really need them in for that moment, but you're like, I wish I could just have you everywhere. And there's Lizbeth Ortiz getting herself righted, perhaps. You know, that was a perfectly aligned kill, well-placed, and got it just off the defender's hands. So maybe her and Morales had a little talk during that break, and they're back on track. Lee. Lewis. And it's 4 nothing Tigers. Yeah, that was a little of an off pass to give to Lewis. I probably would have looked for, I don't, I don't know if, maybe not hitting as hard would be the question. That's where you want to use some trick shots, some off speeds. Get something that's going to go over the net and just find the right spot. Morales just missed the back line. But a uh, great she, run. She gets the Tigers started off well in this second set. So now it's going to be, you know, staying calm and serve receive and taking the ball back on one. What we used to call a side out. You don't quite side out the same way you used to, but concept's still there. Albina Rogova targeting Ortiz, and it'll result in a free ball. Don't she? Across Lewis. The tape slowed her down. Braditza. And Rosanna Braditza left that short. 
that was a bit tight, even with her height and her skill level. So, you know, she probably needed to look at another option than trying to go up for a straight hit. But great rundown by Morales and really calling off her teammates to make sure she had control of that ball. That was one of the miscommunications that occurred in the first set. So already seeing some cleanup. Speaking of cleanup, <laughs> a wet spot that Sarah Lee is going to take care of. These athletes are working hard. They're sweating on the court. You don't want to slip though. Safety first. <laughs> These are the two dynasties that have existed in CUNY Community College Women's Volleyball. Queensboro has won nine titles, the first one being in 2010, once Jason Demas took over in his second year. BMCC, they were the dominant team. They have 11 titles, which is the most, from 87 to 2006. Eight of those won by legendary coach Olga Lorenzo, who had built the program. But they have had some just okay years since, as Griffiths out of the middle, one on none, missed. You know, it's great seeing QCC trying to run some systems, get the middles going and running something a little bit faster. But that also requires some timing and some buildup. So if they haven't really, they didn't really do much of that in the first set. So it's almost like warming up all over again. Morales, back to Griffiths. Nicely done. Like I said, it's a warm up. You got you to gotta run a couple of tries and then you'll get your system. I'm still looking for Griffiths to really get on top of the ball. It seems like she's still coming at it from underneath. So it's kind of floating back, whereas if she can time it, you know, that required her maybe going up a little bit later, she would have gotten her hand on top of the ball, and that would have been a really cool pound. Swing by Emanuela Orell, who lines up right side that time and terminates. You know, I love seeing that uh, Coach Nia bell has described her as the heart of the team so she's someone who's just ready to jump in everywhere and you don't see that from a lot of middles and it's so cool to see her just not care about that stereotype and just be whatever kind of player she wants to be a rare six rotation middle as barditza had the tip there morales hunts it down and that one carried across and Josanne lewis has her easiest kill of the night I mean, when the ball's coming at you, if your best set comes from the opposing team, that's not always a good sign. So, you know, she, she hasn't been able to get off to such a good start, but hopefully QCC hasn't given her uh, any momentum there. Perfect pass, Morales. Braditza did well just to get it over. Hernandez, your to ten. No pancake there. Can Epek Yurtatan get going? She missed nine games September 22nd, returning October 13th. She got hurt September 20th in a match. It's Jenny Chen explaining that the ball was down there. <laughs> and let's see if a timeout is, has been granted to BMCC. It's finding, I'm finding it very interesting how Nia's calling these timeouts where she's, you know, there, there hasn't been too much fight, but she really wants to get her team straight before they go down any kind of rabbit hole. I feel like I'm, I notice a lot of other coaches will usually try to get their team to try and fight through some of the harder points. And Nia's like, no, no, no. I know what my girls need. We're going to bring this in. We're going to reset ourselves, and we're going to come back and dominate, which is what they were doing in the first set. Growing up, Nia Bell's mom, Dr. Linda Bell, worked as a volleyball coach, then in athletic administration. So when her mom coached club ball, Nia often would train with the team. And part of her New York connection was she would always come to New York City to visit, or kind of through New York City to visit her grandparents over the summers and Christmas time because her grandparents lived in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And she says she's always been a country girl but wanted to experience something else and grow as a volleyball coach. That's why she decided to take a head job at the age of 25. Her I first mean, head job. That's, that's how you grow. You throw yourself into the fire. And as we talked about, she was coming into a program that hadn't played for two years, had nothing to start with, and she built it up from nothing. And in her first season as a head coach, you got coach of the year, your team's playing in – the championship finals that's incredible let run with that why not she clearly has incredible talent in knowing who her who her team is and finding a way to make them all work together lewis has made it work her fifth kill 
BMCC on serve, and they're gonna come up with an ace. That one ticking over the net. And it'll work out for Gariana Altador. She is from Queens, Midwood High School, class of 2020. And she had just one varsity year of experience of volleyball. She'll come in to play DS and occasionally serve. This one a little further over the net. Braditsa. That went. That's just a beautiful line shot. I mean, hitting lines really hard because that was so close to being out. But you see her go up, her body is lined up perfectly around that block. She saw that court vision and found the open lane and got a hard kill out of it. Lewis beats the one on one. You know, you can't go one on one with Lewis. And when you've got a team like Queensboro who's who has the the team that can definitely give her two blockers, you have to put two blockers on her. I mean, I saw that read from a mile away with just how the setter was, you know, positioned. There weren't too many options for her. Josanne just showed up to tryouts in August. And Nia Bell says that she reminds Nia of herself, always wants to hit, hit, hit. And they've added more variety to her game as people around the Northeast started to know who number four was. Yurta Tan, Morales organizes, and Yurta Tan can only roll it to the back. Dochi pushed it outside for the swing for Jamie Lee Oderno. Who's on for the first time, Oderno. Over the block. Duran out of the middle. And now changing it up, Dochi will go to the middle. This is Cheyenne Gray Tate that finished. A 5 4 freshman middle. This is her first year playing volleyball ever. I, you know what? Congrats. That's incredible. I. In such a height-focused sport to be 5-4, playing middle, and then getting kills and dominating while doing it, kudos. There's Lewis. That's short into the net. Finish the story on Cheyenne Gray Tate from the Promise Academy in Harlem. She was a cheerleader and track runner. Decided I wanted to play a sport while attending school. Volleyball somehow came up. They were looking for players in August. They found her as a starter. Dochi, after the overpass, Gray Tate again. Then Ortiz, and Ortiz misses. You know, it looks like Morales is setting fairly high, and that seems pretty common in what I've been watching from these matches. However, the hitters have not adjusted to the heights of those sets, so they're going up too early hitting from more under the ball, and it's not giving it the spin that makes a kill look so cool. So these hitters are going to have to adjust to Morales' sets and make that adjustment where they're holding another second longer. Ortiz. Like she did there. Adorno. And Ortiz again, difficult angle. Now in the middle, Aurel. And Ortiz again caught, caught in between. Roll shot, power. It's dead to hitting error. 11 8 BMCC. Timeout, Queensboro. They started 4 0 in this second set. Now BMCC up by three on Facebook Live. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access a member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. I'll give you something, make you shake it, shake it. You better get yourself ready, because I'm about to do my thing. Oh, hey, hey. I'm sitting on the bottom, now I'm dancing on the high Oh, hey, hey. I'm turning on the down, now I'm flipping on the upside. Upside, upside. I'm turning on the down, 
Well, we've had a flip of the coin here, Paige. Second set, 4 nothing Queensboro with Desiree Morales looking like it would be a runaway. Instead, BMCC has found a way to surge in front. How has it happened? I mean, some of it's mental toughness, but again, QCC's kind of fallen back. They were they had cleaned up a lot in the beginning of the set, and it seems as the points are playing out, they're falling back into the way they ended the first set. So they need to get back to their own basics. You, when you're playing in these matches, you have to play your game and not focus so much on what another team is doing and giving them opportunities to build momentum. You don't want a team to win the point after the timeout that you call. Sarah Lee follows it up with an ace, the fourth for BMCC. Great late dipping action, driving the Weilani Figueroa back. And that'll be the error. Figueroa in there to be the DS. Palacios, the kill, 12-9. I think we're going to have to see QCC become a little bit more versatile in this match. They're trying to hit hard, and I totally get that. I want to hit really hard, too. But they need to find some pockets in this um, BMCC defense that they can start to exploit and not think about hitting hard, but hit to the right spots because right now the hitting hard is resulting in 18 attack errors. That's yeah, a very high number through a set and a half. Conversely, BMCC 11. BMCC just over triple zeros, 033. So neither team has hit particularly well. Sometimes it's just about the team that makes the least amount of errors. So even if both teams aren't playing their best, one team has to be playing just that little bit worse. So it's going to be up to QCC to fight for this. Well, Dochi with a great serve. And Queensboro fortunate to get a point out of it, 13-10. And that will put Jenny Dochi one and done midway through the set. Now Desiree Morales. And for the Tigers to try to put together a run. She's had matches, several matches of double-digit aces, three double-doubles on the year. Lewis, roll shot. Hernandez, Braditza cross court. Braditza again, and the two players, Lee and Dochi colliding, Rosanna Braditza. I mean, QCC had control of that entire point just from the beginning. I mean, the fact that Lewis ran up to a space in front of the 10-foot line to make an attack, that should have been on any of the other front row hitters that were there. Um, but great, you know, reach by Dochi and Sarah Lee trying to keep that ball in play. Orell. And she puts it inside the block of Griffiths. I know we're going to talk about Aurel, and that was, you know, just a really great play. But for a moment, Sarah Lee had a perfect serve-receive pass from the floor, giving a perfect pass to Dochi that can set that up. And I always love to give my credit to the defense because it starts with that pass. Sarah Lee wanted to win the libero job, solidified it in early, August, early October. Here's Braditza. Rugova the up. Lewis and the solo block, Braditza. That is what QCC has needed for this entire match. They have not had that kind of control at the net with a block all match. And yet, watching the two of them come together and do that skill, that brings so much momentum to a team. You don't you think kills are going to do it, but honestly, blocks bring so much more momentum. I mean, that's where you get a second point in a row. 14-13 all of a sudden, Rosanna Braditza was the PSAL AA Player of the Year in New York City. Francis Lewis High School, that is a usual power and contender in the city. Tough serving, overpass, Yurtatan got the free ball over. And then the poor first contact from Rugova, and we're all of a sudden tied at 14. I mean, I love the effort um, from both teams really pushing it out again on the defensive side. Something that I heard when I used to play was this concept called bettering the ball. And while grammatically it sounds really bad, <laughs> the concept there that was missed was, okay, you got a bad pass off the fingers, fine but then that next pass needs to be better. 
make the ball playable for the next guy so that we you can build something off of it. Pass the baton in a lot of way. Here's Orell. Hernandez. Good pass. Braditsa. Over the double. Dochi with that second contact. Lunge, but then unable to play it over, and we're even again. So Rosanna Braditsa a little bit more engaged in this second set. Yeah, no, I mean, they, they're passing the ball around. They're getting better passes to Morales. So Morales is giving, has more options to pick where she wants to set. Whereas what I'm seeing on BMCC is there's a bit of a breakdown in the communication. You've got players who really want the ball, but other players who are in a better position to play the ball. So you, you have these collisions where I would rather have somebody else take the ball, but they're not owning it. You know, and then, I mean, we've got Lewis. She's just going to keep dominating if you're not going to put a block on her. So great work. Josanne Lewis up to seven kills. And now an ace to follow it up for BMCC in what feels like a critical second set. Amy Priolo delivering. Priolo as well, just like Cheyenne Gray Tate, did not play high school volleyball. She had middle school experience. Also a little bit of middle school soccer, but was competitive in practice, wanted to learn everything. So Made the team and as a starting right side hitter. I mean, sometimes it's you've got really great athletes who just love the, like love a game, and if you can channel them in just the right way, and they're open to learning, which is something that Nia Bell has talked about, that these girls are all open to learning, you're gonna still get a really great team, and if they don't have that previous exposure and experience, they're willing to throw themselves out there. Lewis has to give up a free ball. Queensboro, chance to get even again. Duran, played over. Oh, and then no one went for the first ball. Queensboro, that's happened a couple times today. 18-16. I mean, that's a really classic play. We call it the donut. It's a hole in the middle of the court that no one wants to cover. And in my experience, when I've usually coached players to cover that, one, they don't give up on the ball, but you've got the libero right there. I would put that first on the libero, and then second, it would be on who's ever playing position five. They're in the best position to take that ball. So somebody, you know, most of the libero should have taken point on that. There is the libero Hernandez. You're to tan. Still no contacting touch. too high. They need a, those sets are so high, the hitters have to hold. Another second would make all the difference on that ball dropping. Timeout taken by Queensboro. So just when the Tigers look like they might pull ahead, BMCC remains in front. Last year, or two years ago, they went nine and 10. Good job done by coach Odali Aponte, spending seven years there. They had been consistently in the CUNY semifinals. They had been in the final most recently in 2018 and 2019, losing to Queensboro both years. But Queensboro has victimized everybody in the CUNYs except for 2014. That was their last loss, that championship match to Hostos, prior to this September's loss to BMCC, a span of 54 matches against the five-team Community College CUNY. I mean, that's an incredible record to uphold and something to be proud of, but it also adds pressure every single match that you don't want that to be the match that ends the record. So this team has had to fight through a couple of mental hurdles in one, losing that streak that was held for so long, but now you're even fighting in this hurdle. The pressure's on them to hold the title. And so far, BMCC is playing like they've got nothing to lose. And they've played well in a couple of NJCAA National Tournaments, which is a 12-team tournament. Queensboro won't make it this year, neither will BMCC. They both lost in this weekend's Region 15 semis. But they finished, for example, 12th last year in the country, as this is an ace to follow it up out of the timeout again by BMCC and Lewis. I mean, that speaks to the mental toughness that Lewis has, because when you've got a coach who's calling timeouts on you, trying to freeze you out, and not only are you able to hold that serve in, but you get an ace off of it. 
You're taking up rent in the other team's brain. Yurta Tan. And maybe that'll get her going. Ipek Yurta Tan, who spent a student exchange year down in Georgia in 2020, 2021 in the Appalachian Mountains, and then decided to give it a go in New York from her native Turkey. What a great up by Lewis. Morales tried to dump. Adorno. And that'll fall for Jamie Lee Adorno. I mean, that was well placed. Like I said, it's not always about hitting hard. It's finding the right spots. And Jamie Lee went and found an open spot on the court. But, you know, great ups from Lewis. And then I just want to see a little bit more communication between Lewis and... Emanuela because they're colliding a little bit. They both really want the ball, which is great. But weirdly enough, in volleyball, there are responsibilities and positions, and you want to allow people their space. Dochi tried to dump. Outside of Kane to Lisbeth Ortiz. Adorno. Morales for Palacio, and Emily Palacio did not get in rhythm. Yeah, no, that would I mean that was just a slight miss hit off the hand. I think she was actually, if it hadn't been for that, that would have been a really great hit. She was in really good position. And I don't think she was going too early or too late on that ball either, which has been plaguing this uh, QCC team. Now back to Sarah Lee. Palacio. And, well, Morales went back to her consecutive times and Palacios had some big matches this season but right now the Tigers have not found a hitter that is in any great rhythm 23-17 BMCC Panthers the top seed honestly if there was anything I would give to tell Morales right now it would be to she has the time but I would tell her to lower her set I think that even dropping it just a little bit would make all the difference for this offense. Because I think she's, it's almost a misnomer that you think, if, oh, if I said higher, it gives you more time. You can better set yourself up for the ball. But that messes up your timing just as much as if you set too low. So I think just if she drops it a little bit, the girls on her team can get a better feel of where that ball's supposed to be. Set point for BMCC and Jamie Lee Adorno into the net. We were tied at 15 in the second set, and it was 4-0 Queensboro. And yet they have their heels backed into a corner. They'll look for a service run from freshman Emily Palacio. And Palacio, that's a microcosm of this second set for Queensboro. They fell apart. The Panthers stayed the course. Late run by BMCC where they outscore Queensboro 10-3 to close it out. BMCC seeking its first title since 2006. They'll try to do it at Queensboro when we come back. Twenty twenty two twenty three CUNY Athletic Conference Championships are presented by Health First. Health Insurance for New Yorkers, the official wellness sponsor of CUNY Athletics. The Hospital for Special Surgery, number one in the U.S. for orthopedics, is proud to be the official hospital of the CUNY Athletic Conference. CUNY University Student Senate, providing our students the platform to shape the City University of New York. And Hometown Ticketing, the official ticketing provider of the CUNY Athletic Conference. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access a member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. Make 
We're about to start the third set here. You're watching the CUNY Community College Women's Volleyball Championship match on Facebook Live. Ralph Vinarczyk with Paige Band now welcoming in Zariz Alahi, who is an analyst of C community engagement with Health First Insurance, who is a new sponsor of the CUNY Athletic Conference, who joins us here. Zariz, first of all, welcome, and I hope you're watching and enjoying uh, volleyball. Tell me, uh, first describe, uh, describe uh, what the market looks like and why Health First wants to jump into and, uh, and, and add more eyeballs to what the CUNY Athletic Conference is. Sure, sure. So definitely I'd like to, you know, say hello to everyone online. Um, and to answer your question, you know, Health First is, you know, really proud to sponsor uh, uh, CUNY Athletics and, you know, be the health for health and wellness sponsor for the second year. Um, and, you know, it's just the, the dedication, the hard work of all the student athletics athletes um, that inspires us to you know really just uh, sponsor them and support them in their healthy lifestyle and you know bring wellness and education uh, to their you know to support them. Zariz describe the market the insurance the health insurance market in particular yeah. in our nearing the end of pandemic New York market what does that look like today? Yeah no it's uh, you know with the pandemic nearing you know it's post post pandemic now you could say in a way um, and, uh, you know, it's in health insurance has become much more of a necessary thing. People really, you know, need to be aware of the benefits of it and, you know, using it will help you as well. And, you know, Health First is one of the largest uh, not-for-profit uh, health uh, insurance companies out there in comparison to others. So, you know, that's another thing, and, you know, we're uh, hospital sponsored. So excess profit, things like that, we, you know, we bring it, take it back to the community, to the, to the hospitals that are serving the community, like, you know, you know, face to face way. And I think that's the key word, as I read in your notes, mm -hmm. it is a nonprofit health first insurance company. And I, the other thing that jumped out at me too, where we live in New York, you guys insure people that are not full time employees at their particular jobs, so 1099 people, yeah. we can call them and international students, which of course is a heavy percentage of the CUNY Athletic Conference. You probably, might, you may know the percentages, but just when you look here, mm -hmm. the numbers are very staggering. Yeah. This is essentially your market. Uh, how would you describe those subtle, unique things that uh, I think most people don't realize that insurance companies need to do? The, the non-full-timers, the gig economy people, mm -hmm. and international students. Yeah, no, I'm glad you mentioned that international students. Uh, you know, we're, we have plans that, you know, are relevant to international students, um, part-time students, full-time students, students that are aging off their parents', uh, you know, plans and so on. So, you know, to fit all of those uh, categories. Um, I myself was a, you know, alumni of CUNY, and, you know, I learned of uh, all the insurance as I went on. I signed up, but I didn't know <laughs> what, you know, co-payment and things like that were. So, you, know, you weren't the only one. I think that's everybody's yeah, experience. Yeah, so, you know, we're not just, you know, trying to, you know, we're trying to get the educational workshops to teach students, like, you know, what, what is co-payment? And it's not that expensive, you know. I, I used to think, oh, health insurance, my parents must pay thousands. But when I signed up initially, I ended up, I was like, oh, it's only 20 bucks a month, and I'm getting what I need from the doctors. So, you know, those are the things that we want to teach the and educate all the students about not just, you know, just get health insurance, uh, you know, and other aspects as well. Uh, Zaris, uh, tell us, uh, Health First has been around for 30 years as a nonprofit insurance company. Uh, where is health insurance going? Uh, to tell you, especially young people there, what does that future look like, whether it's near future, two years, five years down the road, what does that look like? Yeah, no, um, there's, uh, you know, we're, Health First is focused on New York, mainly you know we're concentrated long iron area westchester rockland you know and tri-state area as well uh but the bigger ones out there they're you know they've been leaving the new york area and you know they can't handle it i don't know what it is but uh you know we're focused on this area 
Um, you know, you, we mentioned the diversity in the, all the CUNY campuses. You know, that's what, you know, we really want to stay uh, in touch with that community. Um, you know, it's, insurance is expanding, but as well as, you know, health first. But we're still focused on, you know, where we started all of our original areas. And you guys are available with many, many different languages to serve the New York area. If people want to get into contact, uh, tell us about Health First, what's the best way to get into contact and kind of that path that they, that they need to get themselves started. Definitely, yeah. No, we have uh, loca community locations in all the areas. We have uh, uh, representatives who you know, speak multiple languages, Chinese, English, uh, Urdu, Spanish, you know, Hindi, just to name a few. Um, but, you know, to get in contact with us, just go to healthfirst.org. That's our website. We have a virtual community office. Um, and, you know, just that will uh, open up all the way paths that you want to take. And they're very easy to use websites. Healthfirst.org is the website. Zariz Elahi, an analyst of community engagement with Health First Insurance. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for what you do. Welcome to the CUNY Athletic Conference as one of our new sponsors. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Zariz Olahi here joining us here at Queensboro. Meanwhile, Queensboro here with Rosanna Braditsa. A right side hitter who's had her moments today where it would look like she would be on the verge of having a big set. Has just made it 5-1 Tigers. They are the six-time defending champions and they've been backed into a corner trailing two sets to none. Yurtata off hands. And Aurel too much on that free ball. You know, I mean, um, and watching the beginning of this match, QCC has definitely cleaned themselves up again. They've reset. They're in a good place. So it's going to be about them maintaining this throughout the match, like throughout the rest of this set in order to fight for a fourth set. Lewis is blocked by Braditsa. That was a well-placed block, and that, that is where Braditsa need to be this entire night. So... Good that she's picking it up now, that she's getting those reads now or never. So sometimes being backed in her corner forces you to fight just that much harder for what you want. Aurel. Abraditsa tips over the block. So Rosanna Braditsa, who has been kind of the lone source of offense tonight, she is up to eight kills now for the Tigers. You know, I mean, that... You know, she found the right spot. Because, again, it's not about hitting hard. That's the name of this game. It's who's going to pick apart the other team's defense. And so far, BMCC has been doing a great job of that. Now you're starting to see some variety coming from the QCC offense. I would expect that Rosanna's experience would give her that kind of field of vision on the other side of the court. Aurel. Perfect pass, Morales, and Duran, soft tip, Lewis tips. And then again, that's the libero, and Angelica Hernandez maybe caught in between a bit, her second hitting error, which doesn't <laughs> happen often for liberos. Well, because liberos don't hit too often, and part of the reason for that is they spend so much time hunched over. They're not used to the reach that's needed when you go up to hit. So that's, where, that's what she was missing is she's... He had been hunched over and, you know, kind of reaching forward instead of reaching up. That goes to the MCC. Hernandez, perfect to the front. Braditsa. Rugova fought it off. Lewis drops it in. See, and that was the first time I've really seen Lewis mix up her shot and recognize that that middle of the court is waiting for her to hit to, and the defense is actually ready for her to hit really hard. So her kind of giving it off speed put the defense off. It's exactly what you're looking for. 
Timeout taken by Queensboro. Their big lead has nearly evaporated. A timeout here in Bayson. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. Well, each team has been trying to pull the, that tug of war into finding some rhythm. Both teams hitting in the negatives, as you just mentioned to me off air, Page. And it is Queensboro 8 5, early third set. Trying to defend their six straight CUNY titles. Yeah, they're just trying to manage some of the messier defensive playing that's happening. So it's really coming down to who's going to make the least amount of defensive errors compared to the opposing team. Raditza, she tried to tip over. Rugova got on that. And Yurtatan, as now she is into triple zeros. Four kills for Epic Yurtatan. And she has been trying to find it all night. Yeah, I think she's just getting a little bit of an inconsistent set as part of it, and so it's really messing with her timing. Raditza, that one hung up on the tape. Duran put it over. Oh, well, Dochi gets the set, the setter. Very capable hitter. Aurel, they go to Lewis, and Lewis will bang it through the double. You know, blocking's a really tough skill, so, you know, great effort by, you know, our blocking duo but they left their hands open and it allowed for Lewis to hit right through them. And Braditsa, great ball up by Orell, except no one went after the second ball. You know, it's really hard because when that ball's coming so close to the net, you think you're in position for it and then it turns out you were just out of position for it. So looking at where that ball went, it was a great up, it just was too tight to the net. Radita, nice serve. Duran kind of running a half slide, we could say. Now Morales, now this time she changed direction. And we get a whistle. Net violation against BMCC. But I am seeing Morales dropping the height on that set and really letting her middles run as middles. I mean, it's still going high to right side, but that looks like a good set for um, Rosanna. So I'm not going to, you know, knock that. So now she just has to find her connection with Epec. And you're to 10. Maybe that'll get going. And excuse me, left hand hit for Epec. You're to 10. She's been described as a streaky player. She can get hot, she can be not. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard trying to find your rhythm if you don't feel, you know, as an outside hitter, you're going to get pretty much any set that's going to get thrown at you. So you don't, it's really hard to find your rhythm when you're going to get anything the setter can give you. You know, we're definitely seeing that streakiness tonight. The, the first two sets really haven't produced much, but maybe this is that connection, that moment where they, they find their togetherness. And now you've got three hitters that are running with Morales that can do some damage. They have a lot to prove right now. They have a lot to fight for. Epek Yurkatan trying to lead Queensboro here. Great energy as always here in these in these gyms when you have the PA, the music on, and the students having a chance to unwind and see action as they're trying to cheer on the Queensboro Tigers. 
The MCC trying to defeat the Tigers for the third time this season. You have to really look a long time to see when the last time Queensboro lost to the same CUNY team three times. That's definitely over a decade and perhaps has never happened under Jason Dimas. I mean, anything is possible at all times, but I know that this QCC team is here to fight. Radica targeting Rugova. And Lewis, well, that was kind of a hard free ball. You're to 10, and still too far off the net. In that case, you know, your to 10 came in too early, so she was way under and in front of the ball. That ball was going so far behind her hitting shoulder, there was no way for her to get um, a good contact off that. Gariana Altador attended Midwood High School. That's in the Brooklyn area in Greenpoint. Tip by Duran. Outside Lewis, quick tempo set. Free ball from Hernandez. Now Lewis able to adjust. Morales with a joust. And Lewis is going to win that on the net. You know, Lewis just kept her eye on the ball and had just straight vision for it. So she was able to keep herself in a good spot. Well play at the net. Out the door, not a great first touch by Ortiz. Yurta Tan, and a well-timed block from Jenny Dochi. That was a beautiful block. I mean, she was in position while that ball wasn't going, you know, that little touch off the net. She's just right there. That, that's what you're looking for in a block. And if that's where BMCC is heading, we're about to hit a tie. Duran. Misconnection there on the middle. Lewis ball upped in the back row from Ortiz. You're to 10. And again the double. Well, Jenny Dochi goes five foot seven as the setter. It feels like QCC doesn't trust, like they're like they don't trust themselves. They don't trust their teammates to get the ball. I mean, you had defensive players who are in great position to pick that up. But, you know, you've got players reaching back, and that really just speaks to a lack of trust in this moment. Jenny Dochi graduated from FIT, which is also a two-year school. There is Duran, and that missed. FIT, Fashion Institute of Technology, is a two-year school. She graduated with a degree in fashion design in the spring, is already married to her sweetheart from Italy. They're both here in the U.S., and Dochi went nearly seven years without playing volleyball before picking up the love of the sport last fall of 21. That's gotta be so fascinating being on a team when you've got players that are in such different stages in life and they come together and they have this one common goal and they make it work and right now they're fighting to do something that as far as QCC is concerned is pretty unprecedented. Dochi with the set to Josanne Lewis, and now BMCC has the lead in the third set. Lewis is the first player to double figures. 10 kills, 11 digs for the CUNY Player of the Year. So she has gone for now her 18th double-double of the season. 10th in her last 11 matches, and she follows it up with an ace. BMCC may not have been playing at their best, but they are fighting for every point, and what a great spot. What a great targeted spot by Lewis. And you're to 10. Got a late start on it. Back-to-back -back aces. 15-12. Eight aces on the night for the Panthers. Yeah, I mean, their hitting percentage may not be great, but they're doing something from that back line. Dochi 
and she hits the second ball for a kill, 16-12. When you don't do it all the time, but every once in a while, when you get a setter who goes over on two, nobody on the opposing team defense is ready for that. What a great decision by Dochi. Well, if you want to have maybe the most mature player, married, a little older, already has an associate's degree, you probably want it to be your setter to feed a talented player in Josanne Lewis, who is not just the CUNY Player of the Year, but also won the Region 15 Player of the Year. And that's several Northeast area conferences in what has been a record-setting lone year that she'll spend here. She wants to play at a four-year school and parlay this down the road. She's also spent several summers playing for Antigua as a part of their national team. Summer of 2020, she played qualifiers in the Eastern Caribbeans for Antigua on the beach circuit. Summer 2018, played for Antigua's U20 team in qualifiers for the Pan American. So she may have a volleyball future once her four-year college options are done. She was born in Antigua before growing up in Rochester, Minnesota. I mean, she definitely brings a ton of talent to this program and she can continue to build those skills and bring them to the next program she wants to be at. I mean, she's clearly made such an impact here. The way that this match could end, you know, the way that she's led this team with Sochi, the two of them together have been such an incredible pair. Emily Palacio stops the bleeding momentarily for Queensboro. There hasn't really been a Tiger aside from Desiree Morales that had one long serving run. Can Palacio start that? And she goes to her soft jump serve. Out to Adorno. And we're going to get a double contact called against Queensboro. You know, I've noticed a trend in watching volleyball this year that refs are not calling doubles quite as often. They're really waiting for it to be a pretty egregious double before they make those calls. So, you know, being really picky. Although, you know, QCC, to their credit, have cleaned up a lot from the, like, five carries in a row that they were getting in the first set. Tough serving again by the Panthers. Dochi in the middle. Orell. Griffith slows her down. Ortiz. Jamie Lee Adorno, the swing. Ortiz, the run up. And much better from Lizbeth Ortiz, known as a power hitter. They used her as a serving specialist last year. She won a job on the outside this year and has been trying to find consistency tonight. You know, she found a little bit of rhythm there going off the one leg, almost like a slide without going around a setter in this case. Um, so that was really successful. You know, she's been streaky, as Coach described. She has her moments, and then she doesn't have her moments. So right now they really need her to find a lot of moments. Orell from the middle. Nice ball up by Hernandez. Braditsa cross court. That missed. 18-14, BMCC inching closer. You know, each point rackets up. I don't know if you're feeling it right now. My, my stomach's getting a little like funky. You're just like, oh man, we're getting closer. Is this really going to get decided in three sets? I don't think in scouting this match, I would have called that. And now Jenny Dochi to try to provide more separation. Hernandez though, perfect with the pass. Griffiths tried the back row. Hernandez for Braditza, down the line. You know, that was a beautiful shot and well positioned. That line's been open all night. So, you know, Rosanna has found success by keeping that shot. And if she gets a, a high enough set that allows her to get into position to hit that, she'll continue to hit that while QCC fights. Don't she for Orell running the middle. Hernandez, honorable mention, all region 15 libero for Queensboro. Has been pretty solid. Don't she? That might be the first time she has worked and gotten the dump. I mean, that was that was a great dump. It's all about timing. You know, when you're a setter, it is so important to read your room, read what your players need. You know, are they tired? Are they, 
You know, do they need that break that you can provide them by taking that hit? And when you find that middle of the court, that little donut hole that is always there, even though Morales did get a great touch on the ball, the rest of the defense wasn't ready to assist. Griffiths. Oh, that's been the best connection Queensboro has had with the middle today. Yeah, no, she, some of Morales, you know, she goes from these really high sets and then they got a little bit too low, but she just found a great height for Griffiths to get on top of the ball. Orell. Lewis. This time hitting around that double block. So the key when you have, when you actually get the double block up, and this is why you also have to be consistent about it because the defense is going to work in a pattern. It left an opening that the defense would have been ready to cover had they been doing that probably most of the night. And they haven't really been consistent with the double coverage on the blocking side. So defense has really had to make a lot of adjustments. Morales up for Braditsa who puts it down the line. It, they've left it open for her all night. Now, in all fairness, a line shot is way harder to succeed than a cross-court shot, but I would not give it to Rosanna because she just does such a great job with it. Radiza heading from the back. And Lewis, maybe a quicker tempoed set than she expected. So Queensboro, here they've scored the most. Now they've reached 18 here. Late runs in the first two sets by BMCC, part of the story. And there's a service error by Braditza. 21-18. So BMCC to Amy Criollo. When we're looking at these stats, you've got four, you know, Queensboro's had four aces but six errors. It's really minus two points that you've given to the other team. Whereas on the other side of the coin, you've got BMCC has had eight aces to five errors. So that's three extra points that they have earned for their team. When you combine those two numbers, it's, it's not working in favor of QCC. Dochi tried to dump, slowed down by Duran. Free ball coming for the Panthers. Lewis outside continues her big night in the final. You know, there are times you watch a setter and a hitter connect. And I knew watching that ball come off of Dochi's hands that that was a surefire kill for Lewis. That has been their perfect connection point. It was a beautiful play. The only two Panthers that had ever played college volleyball before on a team that has several that did not even play high school volleyball. And yet they're a few points away from capturing a championship together. A team that did not know one another until deep into August as they added players late into August. It's safe to say half this team did not know of each other's existence around August 10th. You know, but that, that speaks to Coach Nia Bell and what she has really brought to this team because you take a bunch of girls who've never played together, don't know each other, you have a bunch of them who've never played volleyball before, and you have to bring them together to do something great here tonight. And to have done that, she more than earned her Coach of the Year honors. 25-year-old head coach, that was a... Very good outside hitter at two Division II stops, Fayetteville State in Fayetteville, North Carolina, 2016-2017. Second team all-conference her sophomore year, then transferred to Fort Valley State in Georgia, where she was second team all-league in 2019, her senior year. As that'll be a kill for Queensboro. Timeout, Nia Bell, with BMCC still two points away. And Queensboro trying to add some final pressure as Jason Demas has been trying to organize this group for one smooth half of a set for, for most of the night. Yeah, I mean, it, it's been really rough for QCC. They're definitely here to fight, so they have to stay focused on this next point. They have not had the, the lucky end of the straw when it comes to post-timeout points. 
So Nia Bell's been doing a great job calling timeouts for her team. She clearly knows when they need it. And getting them to refocus in this moment to push out these last two points is really, you know, they need to stop them now. You don't want to give GCC a moment to get momentum and bring that into a potential fourth set. Nia Bell rallying her team. Came over from Dream Charter School, coaching middle school and high school volleyball last year while also working as a home caregiver to the elderly. So really having this volleyball dream, an assistant volleyball coach at an NAIA school, Stevens College in Columbia, Missouri, in the 2021 school year, was going to be a graduate assistant coach at another school before the Stevens opportunity came up. She's been determined to be a head coach. Now a chance at a championship. Lewis had to punch it over. Morales, Duran, deep corner swing. That was a great play, and you're seeing that Morales is dropping the heights of her sets, and it's allowing them to have some more success. Higher is not always better. Giving yourself too much time to watch that ball drop. Physics does not make that make sense, but when the ball is lower, that mo the moment where the ball is frozen in air is lower. So when it's dropping, it's not dropping so fast. When the ball's really high, it's hitting its peak really high. So when it drops, it's dropping so fast, your timing's gonna be off. And Morales is starting to find that with her hitters, realizing I need to find that point lower so that way they have a better chance of getting on top of the ball in time. Great description, Paige. 23-21, BMCC. Yurta Tan, handcuffing Orell. Lewis, angled, Yurta Tan. Tremendous dump, uh, uh, up rather, and then Ortiz at the swing. Lewis on the other side, sticks it inside Duran. And here is championship point for the Panthers. I mean, that was a great dig by Yurkatan. And I will say, I did not study physics. I don't know much about physics unless it's volleyball related. And it's all about geometry and angles and energy forces. Josanne Lewis on the service line to try to take BMCC home. They had not played as a program since 2019. Hernandez targeted. Ortiz hesitated on the run up. Dochi. Adorno had the swing. And we continue. 24-22, the score is still very much close enough where BMCC cannot yet be comfortable in this third set. Emily Palacio, deep now for the Tigers. I'm looking at this lineup right. I very much see a ball going into Lewis's hands. Championship point, Lewis is targeted. Adorno, back corner, it goes! BMCC captures their first championship since 2006. And they have put a pause to the Queensboro dynasty. The Tigers, six time defending champions, are stopped on their home floor by BMCC. The Panthers sweep Queensboro and they beat the Tigers for the third time this year. I mean, that was just an incredible game. You know, BMCC came out strong from the start, and they did not let up. It may not have been the most offensively led match, but the defense is what holds out in a championship game. Queensboro's comebacks in the second and third sets falling short. The Tigers, in some ways, stunned. The last time they lost the CUNY final, was in 2014, BMCC, a team that had not met each other until late August, are now champions late in October. We'll take time out. We're coming back with the reaction and the championship presentation on Facebook Live. 2022-23 CUNY Athletic Conference Championships are presented by Health First. Health Insurance for New Yorkers, the official wellness sponsor of CUNY Athletics. The Hospital for Special Surgery, number one in the U.S. for orthopedics, is proud to be the official hospital of the CUNY Athletic Conference. CUNY University Student Senate, 
providing our students the platform to shape the City University of New York. And Hometown Ticketing, the official ticketing provider of the CUNY Athletic Conference. How easy is health insurance with Health First? Absolutely easy with our app. Can you search for a doctor? Absolutely. Can you access a member ID? Absolutely. Download our app today. Hometown Ticketing makes it fast and easy to buy tickets on your school's website or in the new Hometown Fan app. It's simple. Just search for your school, buy your tickets, and they'll be right there in your account, ready to be scanned when you get to your event. Download the Hometown Fan app today. storybook season at 17 and 6 and CUNY champions for the first time since 06. Paige Band is down on the floor now with their coach Nia Bell. Thank you Ralph. I'm here with coach Nia Bell, first year head coach, coach of the year and now CUNY champion. How do you feel right now? <laughs> It's unbelievable, honestly, but I'm super happy for the girls. I think they really worked hard this season. They were learning so much in, sh in such a short amount of time, so I'm really proud of them. How did you bring this team together, a group of girls with very little volleyball experience who just came out to tryouts in August, and you led them to this championship today? What brought them together? Well, I, you know, as a team, you know, you, you win together, you lose together, you cry together, you everything. And, they just love spending time together. Like, ever since they met, they just enjoy each other's presence. And I'm really happy that wasn't, like, a hard task for me as a coach. So, I don't know. I'm grateful. <laughs> well, Coach, congratulations um, to your team on this win tonight and looking forward to seeing what you can bring next season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We Remarkable story for a first-year coach, Nia Bell, at a loss for words almost. And how can you not be interviewing for the job in April and just finding out, finding players with each passing day in August, putting together a championship team. Queensboro getting their runner-up trophies and medals. Certainly will put a bow on their season. Let's go back down now to Paige, who's got Josanne Lewis. Thank you, Ralph, and I'm here with Joanne Lewis, our star of the night. Congratulations on your win. So between the second and third set, you guys were having a little bit of a hard time between you and Dochi. What did you guys talk about to reconnect? Honestly, we just, we talk about stupid stuff. Like, we just get ourselves into the game, like, say funny stuff, just so we can, like, be focused and just be relaxed. And honestly, we just have that chemistry, and we've been working together, and we really deserve this. You came here for a New York experience. Do you feel like you've been able to own that New York experience? I have, honestly, with my amazing teammates. We worked so hard this season. We've dedicated so much, and I'm just so proud of us. Yeah, no, I mean, the leadership between you and Dochi was incredible to watch tonight. You guys played fantastic. Congratulations again. Back to you, Ralph. Number one, Angelica Josanne Lewis in her first and only season in CUNY is going to leave a lasting legacy. 13 kills in the final, 14 digs, yet another double-double. She was leaned on heavily all season, seven times, 20 or more kills, and she takes the Panthers, an inexperienced group around her. That's an understatement along with the setter in Jenny Dochi. 
taking them to a championship. And Queensboro, meanwhile, there will be a program that is back under Jason Demas. They finished 13 and 9, a team with consistent volleyball club players out of the top high school programs in the local area, particularly the Queens area, like Francis Lewis High School and some others. The way Jason Demas recruits consistently, they're certainly going to be back again. The career over for Rosanna Braditsa could end up next year playing at Division II Queens College. Desiree Morales could end up at Hunter College. A couple of sophomores for Jason Demas that have experienced a lot of wins. Last year went 17-5, and five, going to the national tournament after winning CUNY and the Region 15 tournament. Lisbeth Ortiz, a sophomore that could play it a four-year but this is certainly a loss for Queensboro that they will have to take as a pause perhaps in their dynasty and have to start a new one. The Tigers' six-year run has come to an end. And BMCC, I think deservedly so, giving them a round of applause because what the Tigers have accomplished and not necessarily this group but what the entire program has done in setting a very very high bar and standard for CUNY Community College Volleyball. Uh, you had to recruit and get really really good if you were going to compete for a championship in this conference. And the Tigers did play a host of freshmen that can come back next year as sophomores. And they're trying to remember this. Tigers started this year preseason number 13 in the country due to that high standard that they have set over the last decade. So now BMCC will get the trophy for CUNY Coach of the Year, Nia Bell. And they can add to their history a program that has now won 12 CUNY championships in addition to 10 CUNY finals appearances going back to the late 80s. And it has been for a long time divine right that the Panthers would at least play in this game, but not so much in recent years. And for Nia Bell, just 25 years old, I don't know if she would have believed you if you would have told her August 1st, yeah, you're going to go 17-6 and six and beat the team that has won the title in your conference six straight years. You're going to beat them three times. That's what Nia Bell and Josanne Lewis, the libero Sarah Lee, who are there, the, the captains of the Panthers, as they raise the championship trophy for the 12th time as a program and the first time that this team has ever played together. Three sets to none, BMCC winners tonight, unseating Queensboro and ending their long reign. Scores were 25-19, 25-18, and 25-22. Josanne Lewis, the most outstanding player, Another double-double, 13 kills, 14 digs con to conclude her sophomore year. She'll be a very good get for a Division III, Division II program around the country. Nine kills for Rosanna Braditza in her final match as a Queensboro Tiger. Six kills added by Epic Yurtatan. So that'll do it for our entire crew here. Our executive producer, Mark Fratto, our director, Dan Lippenholz. For my partner, Paige Band, my name is Ralph Vindorczyk saying so long and goodbye. You've been watching the 2022 CUNY Community College Women's Volleyball Championship match on Facebook Live.